Hello, let's dive into the Adobe Commerce Cloud and see what we've got here. Firstly, let me clarify one thing. In the Adobe documentation and in my first video with introduction to Adobe Commerce Cloud, I mentioned that we've got Starter and Proplan. That's actually no longer true, as since 2020, Adobe offers only one plan, which is actually the Proplan, but this name also is no longer valid. So we just simply call it Adobe Commerce Cloud. With that in mind, let's take a look at core features of Adobe Commerce Cloud. We of course receive an access to the Adobe Commerce with all the perks of it, B2B modules that can be handy if your client focuses on B2B relations, software as a services like live search, catalog service and more. You got a handy tool for onboarding PayPal and also a set of e-commerce reporting tools called business intelligence that allows um, e-commerce businesses to gather and analyze data from various sources, create custom dashboards, generate reports and gain insights into the uh, key performance indicators um, such as customer behavior and sales trends. So it's designed to help merchants make informed decisions and optimize their online stores. In terms of infrastructure and deployment, Adobe Commerce Cloud comes with tools like web interface where you can manage your cloud configurations, see commit lists and status of deployments. So this is our control panel. We also get access to Magento CLI and ECE tools, which also helps to manage and deploy the commerce application, but from CLI. We get continuous deployments, so whenever we push a commit to an active branch, the cloud platform automatically handles the build and deployment for you. And with Adobe Commerce Cloud, we also get access to Fastly, uh, which is used for HTTP caching and CDN, Fastly IO that boosts website speed for real-time image optimization, and also WAF services, so web application firewall. Um, so basically it protects web applications from security threats. All right, there's even more. With Adobe Commerce Cloud, we get infrastructure as a service environments for both production and staging environments and possibility to create up to two additional platform as a service environments that are closely tied to the names of our Git branches. So you can actually have an unlimited number of inactive branches and when you want to create an additional environment, you just need to activate a branch. Adobe Commerce Cloud, based on that, will set up a new platform as a service container and create a new integration environment. And if you are still unsure about platform as a service and infrastructure as a service, you can refer to my previous video where I provide an explanation for these concepts. I guess you can also notice that above production environment, we get another one called master. And as Adobe states in their documentation, this environment should be used in case if there is an emergent need to debug the production environment without interrupting any services. So this is another platform as a service environment that is not connected to the pro production's resources and services. Because of that, it is recommended to keep master branch up to date with production one, because you never know when you will need to debug on production. On top of all of that, we get New Relic APM, which is performance monitoring, already set up and available for us on both production and staging environments. And on production, we also get access to New Relic infrastructure. And this is a feature that automatically links with your application data and performance analytics to offer real-time server monitoring. However, it's worth mentioning that New Relic infrastructure is only included in the production environment, while the staging environment only includes APM. Now that we know what environments we have in Adobe Commerce Cloud, let's discuss the purpose of each environment. The production environment is responsible for running your storefronts that are visible to your customers. It includes services like New Relic, Fastly and other mentioned earlier. The staging environment matches the production um, architecture and is designed for user acceptance testing, developing content and basically final review before pushing features to the production environment. Integration environments, on the other hand, are the simplest ones. 
they are specifically designed for limited testing and development purposes. Unlike the previously mentioned services, integration environments are not connected to any of them. This means that you can use them for simple testing while you are developing new features. However, the final test should be conducted in the staging environment, which is an exact copy of the production environment. In addition to everything mentioned before, you get all the time monitoring and email support for the core application and the cloud infrastructure, a dedicated customer technical advisor who will take excellent care of your project and specifically assist your client in getting the most out of Adobe Commerce. Um, additionally, there are automatic backups for both staging and production, but we'll discuss this further in another video. I hope that you feel as excited as me to dive into the world of Adobe Commerce Cloud and I hope that you got a glance at its enormous potential. So stay tuned and in the next video we will cover the cloud web interface. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.